This is ABC 15 Mornings. Looking for a cause. We are live this morning as an explosion rocks the East Valley. Bracing for more attacks. The messiness of a withdrawal like this was inevitable, but it certainly could have been done better. Service members killed days before the deadline to leave Afghanistan. Making a career change. Highlight those skills during interviews as well, because that's what employers are looking for. New research showing it's a job seekers market. And only on ABC 15 mornings. He's trying to rip them off because he's trying to get access to his toes. He wanted to play. A Valley mom with an idea that might just knock your socks off. And she might look familiar to you because she used to be an investigator here yeah. at ABC 15 and then moved on to Good Morning America. Abby Boudreaux back in the Valley. Can't wait to share her story with you. Well, good morning, everyone. You made it to Friday. Congratulations. Yes. We're all excited about that. <laughs> Hopefully you are, too. I'm Allison Rodriguez in for Nick Saletti today alongside Kaylee O'Kelly. And we do want to get you over to Iris right now for a look at this hot weather. Yeah, and that excessive heat warning that remains in a place through today. We remain in weather action mode too. a reminder. Don't let your guard down when it comes to the heat today. One more day of these temperatures at 110 or hotter. That excessive heat warning remains in effect through 8 o'clock here this evening for the entire Phoenix metro area. So all of our neighborhoods areas to our east Lake Globe and Miami, the Tonto Basin and areas to our south too. And for western Arizona, that heat alert will actually extend all the way through tomorrow tomorrow evening. Here's where temperatures stand as you step outside. I wish I could tell you it's cooler. It's not. Unfortunately, the sun officially up just a couple of minutes ago. We've got clear skies, so a gorgeous looking view as you step outside, which I recommend if you want to get outdoors for a hike, for a run, for a bike ride, do it soon. Temperatures are in the 80s across most of the valley and Phoenix is just barely below that 90 degree mark at 89. So it is a warmer start to the day, but compared to where we'll be later, it's going to be the coolest point in the day. So as you hit the road, clear skies, our temperature in the upper 80s. You might need that AC on at least on low. Then we're heating up triple digits by around 10 AM, 106 by lunchtime, and then crank up that AC for that commute home with a high today of 111 degrees. But things will start to change this weekend. We've got lower temperatures and a big change in our rain chances too, especially into next week. I'm going to break it all down for you in that full seven day forecast. Megan Thompson, though, keeping a close eye on our morning drive and Megan, you've been tracking what's been a busy Friday so far. It sure has Iris and we are getting new information from DPS on this crash on the I-10 westbound near 35th Avenue. Some updates for you. So the exit ramp at 35th Avenue is blocked off. You will not be able to get off the freeway there. DPS also telling us they have restricted and closed the on ramp to the I-10 westbound at 27th Avenue, trying to restrict traffic in that area. This is a deadly crash investigation that they are working Working on. So those two ramps, the exit and the on ramp are blocked in that area, plus the right lane. So we're seeing those speeds start to drop to about 13 miles per hour in that area. So for your alternate, I would say get off the freeway there at 19th Avenue, take McDowell, and then you can get back on at 35th Avenue. You won't be able to exit the freeway, but you will be able to get on and continue where we have green conditions. I'm tracking that one and I'll give you a check of some of those desert drive times still coming up. Well, multiple people are in the hospital right now. Still no exact cause is being reported into a massive explosion here in the valley. Yeah, we were watching this dash cam and it's just unbelievable. And a number of businesses destroyed in Chandler. This all happened near Ray and rural roads. Debris was blown everywhere. Our Mark Thompson is joining us live from the scene right now with the very latest. Mark, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you, Allison. And you can see now in the daylight, uh, just the aftermath of what took place here yesterday. They are keeping us across the street for our safety, but you can see as we zoom in here, the roof that was blown off of that Chandler business in the strip mall. Lots of personnel there uh, on scene also trying to complete the investigation and find out exactly what happened here. A lot of the surrounding businesses here, they're going to be closed for several days. At one point, dozens of homes in this area, they were evacuated as well, but people have been given the all clear to go back to their houses. The devastating explosion, it happened around 930 Thursday morning and it could be heard for miles away. Four victims, as you mentioned, in the hospital right now. The good news, they are all expected to survive. Investigators, they're going to be out here all day looking to confirm whether a gas leak caused this explosion. We spoke to the owner of a business in this strip mall who describes the moment that this explosion happened. Some of our windows blew out. 
um, we're only a couple suites away from where the explosion was. So the, uh, our ceiling tiles fell down, the insulation fell in, um, windows blown out. Um, there's debris all over my team's cars. And you really feel for the four victims who are in the hospital. They have burns to 15 to 30 percent of their bodies. I mean, and the looks of this explosion, you're really just thankful that it really wasn't a lot worse. There could have been a lot more victims. Thankfully, there were not. But again, investigators still out here trying to determine what caused the explosion. Reporting live this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15, Arizona. Back to you guys. And to be in a newsroom at that time was obviously triggering right in your stomach and especially so because of what was going on in Afghanistan. We do want to show you a live look at the White House this morning. Flags lowered in honor of the 13 U.S. service members killed in the terror attack there in Afghanistan. Governor Doug Ducey also ordering flags at half staff at all state buildings through Monday. Well, this morning, crowds of people are back at Kabul's airport. Evacuation flights have resumed as U.S. forces look to leave Afghanistan. The deadline is Tuesday. Now, the military is bracing for more potential terrorist attacks. The head of the U.S. Central Command saying this time they could see rockets or car bombs targeting the airport. And besides the U.S. service members who died Thursday, nearly 100 Afghans were also killed. President Biden says the U.S. will hunt down and make those pay who carried out the attacks. Let's turn to COVID-19 coverage right now. In a matter of hours, Arizona expecting to hit a new milestone in the pandemic, one that was really hard to fathom when all of this started last year. One million reported cases of COVID-19. The state has been adding around 2,500 cases a day for the past week. Now, since the start of the pandemic, one in seven Arizonans have been infected with COVID-19. But here's some hope. Vaccination efforts, they are ramping up. We are now learning more than 640,000 Americans have received a third dose. The FDA recently authorizing a booster shot for certain higher risk people. The CDC is preparing to roll out third shots to everybody else in the next three weeks. You know, a new leader for the state health department is going to be taking over starting Monday. Don Harrington is going to replace Dr. Kara Christ as interim director. Harrington has been with the health department for 21 years. He currently serves as deputy director for planning and operations. The governor also tapping former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Richard Carmona as senior public health advisor. We're told Carmona will lead the vaccination effort. Well, today, Red Cross volunteers from the Valley will head to Louisiana and Texas all to prepare for for Tropical Storm Ida, which is expected to make landfall this weekend. You know, it could become the strongest storm of this hurricane season. In a few hours, the NFL will decide whether to cancel the Cardinals' last preseason game against the Saints tomorrow. Iris is tracking this storm, and she will be giving us a full report here in just a moment. Severe weather in Arizona this month. It has created widespread property damage from Gila Bend to Globe. Up to Flagstaff, too. Yes. Just so many areas that have been hit really hard. And while we may think that insurance company companies are going to take care of the cost, that's not likely the case here. It gets a little bit sticky. Our Angie Kaylee live for us this morning breaking this down. Angie? It does. You know, you see this flood damage and you would think that insurance would take care of it. But as we found out, it rarely takes care of it in the case of homeowners and it almost never takes care of it in the case of renters. Now, you may remember we introduced you to Stacy Bailey. She had just moved into her rental in Scottsdale. And just a few days later, a monsoon storm sent water gushing into her apartment. Boxes of belongings soaked. Well, it turns out renters insurance would not cover any of her personal property damage, even if she had it. Also, the torrential downpour that brought flash flooding to parts of Arizona, including Flagstaff, left a path of destruction. Susan Hall from Schaller and Thomas Family Insurance says standard homeowners insurance policies do not cover this type of loss. People make assumptions about what's covered on their policy and um, don't really think about what's not. And flood is a non-covered peril on most property policies. The homeowners, um, renters policies, it's not covered. And it's, it's pretty specific about that. Hall says homeowners and renters insurance does cover water damage from incidents like water heater or sprinkler malfunctions, but not monsoon flooding. So what can you do? Well, you can get flood insurance and Hall says you do not have to live in a floodplain to get it. And as you saw there, you don't have to live in a floodplain to get costly losses from flood damage.
Kaylee, back to you. Certainly makes sense and you want to be prepared for sure. Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, finding a successful career. More of you are changing jobs altogether, but what three skills will do for employees and what they are to make sure you land that gig. Plus, back in the fold, new phones are going to be hitting the stores today. Today, President Joe Biden will be hosting the new Prime Minister of Israel. The two were set to meet Thursday, but those meetings were postponed after the terror attacks there in Afghanistan. Federal investigators releasing some new video, and it shows extensive corrosion along the foundation of the Florida condo building that collapsed back in June. You may remember 98 people were killed. The National Institute of Standards and Technology are doing a five-part investigation to figure out what happened. The CDC investigating two outbreaks now of salmonella cases across 17 states. Arizona is among them. Uh, we've learned you can buy some of this meat at Costco. Both are linked to Italian style meats. And so far, we're told there have been 36 cases of salmonella and 12 people have been hospitalized. The Department of Education is canceling more than a billion dollars in student loan debt. This is for those who attended ITT Technical Institute. That college now shut down. The cancellation will be automatic for borrowers. So who qualify? That'll start in September. Well, this is kind of cool. It's going to cost you, though. Samsung's newest foldable phones, they hit stores today. The Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3, and they do range in price. Wait for it. Cha-ching! From about 1000 bucks all the way up to $1,800. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. I'm continuing to monitor this crash on the I-10 westbound near 35th Avenue. We have multiple DPS troopers and investigators, as you can see right here on the screen, working on this fatal crash. So the right lane is blocked in that area as you're passing by. You see traffic inching along with that right lane, then blocked. And we are also dealing with the on-ramp at 27th Avenue being restricted and the exit ramp at 35th Avenue. So that backup is building where you're starting to hit the brakes about two miles at this point of the morning. Checking those desert drive times for you in other spots. I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack, 21 minutes. The 17 southbound and the 51 southbound are looking good with that drive time right around 10 to 15 minutes. As we check out some weekend construction, some big work is going to be going on surrounding the airport and with the Broadway curve improvement project. So closed, the I-10 eastbound is going to be shut down between the 51 interchange and the US 60. All I-10 eastbound on ramps between Third Street and the US 60 will also be blocked off. I'll give you a check of some of those alternates still ahead, but we do want to check in with meteorologist Iris Hermosillo once again on this weather action day. Let's talk about it because temperatures at this point likely approaching their coolest point of the day before we start to really heat things up. The sun coming up just before 6 a.m. Our temperatures right now in the 70s, but mostly 80s around the valley, so it is a little bit warmer than it's been the last couple of mornings as you get ready to step outside, but that's also due to the fact that we hit 112 for a high yesterday, so temperatures slow to cool overnight. We're down to just 87 in Queen Creek at this hour, 88 in Tempe, and we're sitting in the low to mid 80s in spots like Peoria, Goodyear, and Surprise. Now, we do have Buckeye in the 70s. Chandler, you're also checking in at 79. Maricopa, you're a little cooler at 76 degrees, and we're right at 79 degrees in Anthem, but either way, get those outdoor activities done soon. If you want to go for a walk around the neighborhood, maybe you've got to get the pup out before you head out the door. Again, the sooner the better. Our temperature will stay in the upper 80s for the next couple of hours, and then we're likely going to see the 90s again by around 8 o'clock here this morning. Make sure you're hydrating if you are going to be doing any more strenuous outdoor activities, and a reminder that those trails close in spots around or at Camelback and Piestawa Peak by 11 a.m. Temperatures by then already well into the hundreds at 104 degrees. We'll likely see the first triple digits today a little earlier by around 10 o'clock. Then look at these high temperatures. We're talking 111 in Gilbert, Mesa, Tempe, and Ahwatukee, Phoenix, too. But we could make it up to 112 again in some neighborhoods like Levine, Goodyear, and Buckeye. Those look to be the hottest spots today in the valley. And the hottest spots in our state, Lake Havasu, up to 116 degrees. 83 for Flagstaff, 93 in Payson, and 97 in Globe. After tracking some storms in eastern Arizona yesterday, this morning we're off to a dry start on Desert Doppler radar. But again today, we'll be watching for thunderstorms 
storms. Primarily, you'll notice the eastern rim and the White Mountains get active again. Also down in southern Arizona, the valley is still looking dry today, but changes are kicking in and this weekend we've got to watch for storms. There is a chance that we get a few storms off the higher terrain into the area on Saturday. So into the Phoenix metro area on Saturday, about a 10% chance for storms. We're also going to have to watch for some dust this weekend too. But then next week things change even more. All eyes on tropical storm Nora. I've been telling you about this storm for the last few days. It officially became a tropical storm yesterday. It could strengthen to a hurricane over the weekend as it tracks towards the Baja Peninsula and then eventually we're going to get some of that moisture here in our state. So watch future cast. The moisture works this way north. This storm gradually weakening once it makes landfall, but that moisture will enhance the rain potential all across our state too. the exact track of it. Still a little uncertain, but we're going to get essentially more monsoon and tropical moisture. That means storm chances are going up, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. The big risk will be flooding and flash flooding, especially in our burn scars, and we're talking temperatures in the 90s by the middle of next week too. And by the way, I am keeping a close eye on tropical storm Ida. This one expecting that to go through the Gulf of Mexico, and it could be an impact for the Cardinals game tomorrow. It will approach New Orleans and essentially that Louisiana coastline as a category two, if not a category three hurricane by sometime late Saturday. So I think this may really impact that game. It's possible it won't happen because of this storm that's approaching. So we'll be watching that closely. Again, a dangerous storm heading towards that Louisiana coastline as we also keep an eye on those increasing storm chances here today, though, sizzling hot and then temperatures trending down this weekend and especially next week. It is 619. The mass exodus of workers that we are seeing right in several industries could boil down to one thing. This is really good information for business owners. Stalled career growth. In fact, about half of the people asked say skills training would have kept them right where they were. For supervisors, career advisors say this is the time to check in with your staff members about long-term career goals to see if there are opportunities for training or certifications. Top three hard skills that workers need to ramp up on are Number one, technical. Number two, computer. Number three, occupational related. That would be credentials and licensing. These experts also say training for soft skills, including management or leadership, even communication, should not be overlooked. It's always about growing, right, where you are. Uh, Labor Day just around the corner, by the way, and it's not too late to find a quick escape either. We know everyone could kind of use a breather right now, right? This is on your bulletin board this morning. First up, how about Santa Barbara? I've never been, but it's oh, only it's about a seven hour drive from the valley. Yeah, I hear it's I gorgeous. I used to report there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a quick flight away, too. You can enjoy the Mediterranean climate, their Spanish architecture and beautiful beaches as well because we kind of have some of the architecture here but we don't have those beaches next up maybe go Sonoma yeah it's got great food and wine scene you know this right the wine up there is typically cheaper than Napa too finally if you do have time to head to the east coast you may want to check out Savannah Georgia the Spanish moss the cobblestone streets the iconic tree-lined walkways they're hard to resist. It's kind of like taking a step back in time. And hey, we are not forgetting our state. Arizona has amazing places like Monument Valley on the Navajo Nation. They're open at limited capacity, taking the labor out of Labor Day travel. That is today's bulletin board. Coming up, is the rebound over? New figures this morning are showing air travel is quickly dropping. They're like, you left Good Morning America what a dream job. And yes, it was. But I, I kind of have a bigger dream right now, and it's to run my sock company. Oh, you're going to love this. From ABC 15 investigator to Good Morning America, how this Valley mom invented this smart sock solution, and it's now being sold at Target. And now I have two children, right? Yes. Frustrated with regular socks. No wonder I came up with this idea. Oh boy, if you're waiting for the kids to get up, you know the sock struggle can be so real. If your kids do give you a hard time about maybe tags in the clothing or those itchy seams on socks, you're going to love this story. We have help, and it's all thanks to this innovative idea from a Valley mom. I got the chance to sit down and talk to her about it. Well, this is a sock -a and there's no other sock like it. For kids finicky about wearing socks, this Arizona mom now has a smart sock solution called Sockaboos. You can have your toes uncovered for breathability and for traction, so kids can run around real fast wearing socks, or you can cover your toes and you can be warm and cozy. 
You might recognize Abby Boudreau from her time here as an ABC 15 investigator before she made the leap to Good Morning America. I sat down with this three-time Emmy award-winning journalist. These are the best ever no-slip socks. She came up with the idea nine years ago when her baby boy kept ripping off his socks. A new mom, I didn't understand why he would do that. And then I realized, oh my gosh, he's trying to rip them off because he's trying to get access to his toes. He wanted to play. She cut the top of his socks off so I made it into a flip sock and I sewed on a piece of fabric so that his little toes could be covered for nap time. When he started walking, she started to realize this idea could become something big. And all of a sudden he could spread those toes. He had a great grip. He could grip the ground that he was walking on and I thought, oh my gosh, this could be a product. This could be a safer sock for babies and toddlers learning to walk. And now heavy retail hitters like Target are selling her sensory friendly socks. So when I say dream come true, I'm serious. Like for me, this was, this is it. I'm so excited and they're gonna help get the word out about my small little spunky sock company. And help families, a lot of them in the process. By the way, if you have an idea and you're thinking, gosh, yeah, I wanted to come to life. You'll wanna check out the article with this story. It's up now at abc15.com. All kinds of tips and information from Abby. Up next at 630, let the gambling begin in Arizona. More money, more money, more money this weekend. You can download <laughs> sports betting apps and register to play. The explosion rocking this Chandler strip mall, forcing evacuations and several injured now recovering in the hospital. I'm Mark Thompson. I'll break down where the investigation stands coming up in a live report. And evacuations just resuming in Afghanistan this morning. The U.S. working to get everyone out safely in the wake of those deadly terror attacks and just days before the deadline to withdraw. And if you are looking for something to do this weekend, maybe eat some nice food or take a ride on a boat, we're going to tell you about a special event happening tomorrow in Tempe. And before you head outside today, a few things to note. We're back under air quality alerts and heat warnings as our heat risk is in the very high range. But things are changing. Rain chances and much lower temperatures all in your seven-day forecast. I'm breaking it down day by day.